How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. And today we're going to get the joiner assembled and on the saw. It'll be kind of a long, it might be kind of a little bit of a long video. Uh, I'll try to keep it under 30 minutes. And uh, there's a lot going on there with the joiner. But it's uh, sitting on the saw, you'll see right here. And, uh, but uh, we'll get it together, assembled. And, uh, came out just beautiful uh, hopefully uh, we'll have the motor done soon I just picked up a motor from Gary Brown Gary Brown is the one who donated the joiner he's also donated a new motor for me that's not new it's the same vintage uh, early 40s uh, saw uh, mo a motor it, it came off of this exact model saw it's a one horse one the other one was a three-quarter that uh, it needs to be rewound. Uh, so this is a running saw, a, a running motor. It's in terrible shape. You'll see it in the next video. And uh, uh, as far as the outside goes, but it works. It needs new bearings, uh, so I need to tear it down, change the bearings at least, and clean it up and paint it. Uh, but it's a one horse motor. The one that was on here was a three quarter, so that will be a nice upgrade. And uh, but we're really. Moving along here as fast as I can, really. Uh, this is uh, going to my son-in-law. It's a Christmas present. So uh, I think he'll like it. It's, it's going to be an awesome piece of equipment. Almost not going to want to get rid of it. So, All right, you guys. Let's, let's get this thing to, let's get this joiner together. All right. All the pieces are primed. We got some there, and I got a couple over here, right? That and the little adjuster piece. And there's one hanging right there. That's the piece I uh, did the repairs on. So I'm going to get these finished coated. Now I just use a standard quart pot spray gun. It's a, this one's a Devilbus. I also have one that's a Binks. Run 30 pounds of air and. Uh, Oh, works great. <laughs> I, I've been using this thing for years. It works great. Uh, so we're going to get these uh, all painted. Now we let it dry. I'm not getting very many warm days. Gotta get it done. This is the cutter head out of the joiner. Now everything's been removed. Uh, the bearings, I've got those off. Um, and the cutter blades and the backing plates. All, everything's been removed and I've cleaned it up uh, pretty darn good. I'm not gonna take it to like a super high polish. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blue it. Uh, with uh, Brunel's Oxo, Oxfo Blue. Uh, this stuff works, um, as far as a cold blue goes, this is this is excellent stuff. Uh, um, I really like using it, it's easy to use. And we're just gonna go through it here. Nothing, nothing real, real hard about it. But one thing to remember about bluing, you're not gonna hide anything. <laughs> uh, these here, it has, it has some very small uh, pitting from rusting, you know, having rust on it. Um, you're not going to get, you're not going to hide anything. So actually, things probably stand out even more imperfection wise. But I'm doing this for, uh, give it some kind of rust protection. Otherwise, it will rust again. Uh, so I've cleaned it up like real good and, and we're just going to clean it here. Big important thing is get all the dirt and oil off. Oil is, you know, even fingerprints, uh, even your, you know, using your, getting your hands on here. I'll put on gloves here in a second. But I'm just showing you here. I'm just wiping it down. I'm just using alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Um, this seems to work really, really well. It's cheap and easy to find. Uh, you, you, know, you can use uh, acetone um, if you want. But isopropyl seems to work just fine uh, doing this. 
but you want to wipe down every little bit everywhere you uh, want to blue it you want to get it clean I'm, now I'm going to wipe it down I use these uh, microfiber cloth uh, or towels just to buff it down a little bit making sure there's no alcohol left uh, alcohol will evaporate Look at that towel comes out clean uh, not showing any oil or anything now I'm just gonna pour some in a cup yeah they'll say to use a cotton swabs and all that well you'll go through a lot of cotton swabs doing this <laughs> Uh, this stuff, this microfiber stuff, does an excellent job of for application wise. Uh, I just soak it and uh, watch how fast this is. It's like instant, right? Now I'm going to blue the whole thing, even where the bearing goes. It won't hurt. Now you may get a little blotchiness. Uh, it's just sometimes, especially older stuff, can, uh, whether there's something up with the metal. Uh, but what we're going to do, to, I'm going to show you how you, we can even it out if there is blotchiness. If, if you don't care, don't care then. But we're going to really rub it down good. Now you're going to say this is wasteful because the stuff's not cheap. Yeah, a little bit, but um, it gives you a better, a, a better coating of, of bluing uh, this way. You're actually turning um, the surface uh, iron, the iron ions on the surface of the material uh, into magnetite and you're rusting it. You are oxidizing it, but with the chemicals. Take the other end of your rag and just wipe it down. Now I'm just going to use a Scotch Bright pad. This is a maroon one, and this is called what is called carding. Uh, you can use a wire brush if you want, a nice clean wire brush, or I've been using this uh, one pad for doing the same thing. So it's there's nothing really on it other than the bluing stuff chemicals and we're just going to lightly cart it off this is, that's what the, they call this make sure you do this in the lengthwise direction if you put scratches both ways you might they might show up now I'm just wiping it down just getting rid of the dust particles and stuff from the scotch bright pad that's all even they won't hurt then we're gonna do one more on there and we're gonna do the same thing again what by carding it off um, you'll you get this so it's a more even color like that uh, you'll have less blotchiness if you do this several times all matters how dark do you want it the more you do it the darker it will get Good. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same process again and uh, probably what I'll do is I'm going to do this two more times with the bluing, carting off 
wiping down and all that. We'll just do it uh, two more times and uh, that will be four times and we'll see how it looks. All right, this is uh, after four times. Uh, it looks really good. I'm not going to card it off or anything now. I just let it dry and then after it dried, I wiped it all down with the cloth. Okay, I just kind of rubbed it a little bit. That's it. Then I really like this stuff right here. This is a Bow Shield T9. And it says for bicycles or something, but what it does is it's an oil and it's waterproofing. It dries, put it on and let it dry. And it gives a really nice protective surface. So we're going to oil this all up. I need to order some more. Um, to go and set that where it can dry and then we'll come back to it before and after took the paint off stripped it polished it got rid of all the parting lines came out awesome all right this is the dried spindle all done up got my fingerprints on it but that's all right. Anyway, came out pretty darn nice. Um, I touched it. <laughs> but, you know, it's going to get touched. So, came out awesome as far as the bluing goes. All in the grooves and everything. Now, if you don't want it on the bearing surfaces, which is really no big deal, um, just take your take a scotch bright pad and you can just buff that clean but I'm gonna leave it on there it won't hurt anything will not make a difference of uh, fit or the bearings or anything so anyway this came out awesome now let's take a look at the other pieces I blued these are all the other pieces I blued these are the cutting edges the backing plate uh, with the chip breaker in it all blued cleaned up all the screws tapped the holes out there's three of those, and these are uh, these are the lead screws for adjusting the uh, height of the tables. All blued, clean to blued bushings. Since these have to slip into fitted holes, uh, I couldn't, I can't paint them, so I just blued them. And then these are the dovetail locking ones, right there. All those came out really good. These are the cross cross slide lock bar uh, bars. Uh, the locking nut, all blued. I was going to paint it, but uh, it looks better blued up. And then a T-nut. So you'll see all how all this goes back together. This is part of the adjusting portion to set your angles for the joiner. This is the badge that goes on here uh, for the angles to have a pointer and set your angles. Well, this was attached with what are called drive screws, three of them. This is a drive screw. This has a, a spiral type thread on it and you just pound them into a hole and it kind of screws itself in and is tight. Now, usually the hole you drill is through the material so you can come from the back side with a small pin punch and just not drive them out well these ones appears that it they're blind holes so they're very difficult to get out because you'll have to pry this up and you'll screw up the badge and these ones that they used were actually hardened steel uh, a regular drill would not drill them so what I did is I milled them down 
to within just a few thousandths of the surface of the badge. Very, very close to the badge. Maybe ten thousandths or so, fifteen thousandths, down to the top. You know, so I had a disc to center on. They don't have center punch marks like some rivets do. And now, then, that's, that's this point here and this point here. Then I drilled with a carbide spotting drill. Solid carbide spotting drill. Centered up the, just by eye and drilled down and knocked the heads off. That, that thin head just pops off like a rivet, like a pop rivet. So that, that, that worked out well, and then I removed the badge. Now I have these little bits of, of drive screws sticking up that are hard. I can't drill them out. It's a very small hole. I don't have like a solid carbide drill to drill those out. So this is my solution. So over here, what I did is I used a 5 16 roto brooch. And I centered up on the on the uh, small head that was left from the rivet and then I drilled around it. I went to a quarter inch deep. Uh, these are a little less than quarters, about 200 thousandths long these, than my new ones. So that I went to a quarter inch to make sure I got it all. And then this is a little piece. Now this is cast iron. So I knew that this would come out easily just by prying it on the side and snapping it off. It just broke right off. I'm very close to the wall thickness. You'll see here, this is the bottom of the uh, piece that came out and the pin is still in there or, or the drive screw is still in there and you'll see the very thin wall thickness. So this came right out very nicely. That's the top. And uh, I have a partial hole that's there to center up on uh, so I'm right on right on the center for when I drill the for the new drive screw. Now what I'm going to do is take a piece of 1018 stock. I measured this hole. It's a little bit bigger than 5 16 It's uh, about six thousandths over. So I have a piece of 3 8 1018 steel that I'm going to uh, machine to fit this with a nice press fit, and we'll press a plug in. After that's in, then I'll come back and machine this down smooth. Now these holes that are in here already, I'm going to drill, drill it all the way through, uh, just in case you ever want to try to get one of these out. This is the uh, 5 16 rotor brooch, right there. Now I'm truing up where that rivet is, getting so it's really accurate. And uh, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to drill down a little bit. The center for the rotor brooch. The center has this spring-loaded center to it. And so we have a spot to start at. break that out. This breaks right off. And there's a hole left. And I went down 200 thousandths this time and so I'm just a little bit, just barely past the drive screw. That's perfect. Now we're going to drill down through the hole that is only so deep and make it a through hole. I'm drilling down until I get a little aluminum on the drill and that's it. Alright, you see how I left a lot there to drive in. So that one there. And we're putting a little drop of, a little bit of retaining compound on here too. Just to uh,
just to make sure things are tight. Now, you want this too big, you could actually split that casting. So, it's in there, it's in there tight, but it's not pushing out very much, right? Drilled through now. Now you can punch those back out if you ever have to, you know. This it won't interfere with anything going on here. And these are the uh, adjustment handles. They are aluminum, and I really worked over these a lot. Remove parting lines and bad spots and all that good stuff and uh, buffed them out, polished them up, came out awesome. That's the fence. This came out pretty good. The right, right in here, right up in here, right in here, there was some. Uh, a minor pitting but you know I I could have spent all sorts of time on that uh, I did I spent a lot of time on this uh, sanding it anyway uh, but to get that down to where I could get all rid of all that was just gonna be pretty much impossible so I just cleaned it up the best we could and uh, came out pretty darn good pretty happy with that So to speed this all up, I've gone through, I've put in set screws, I've pre um, anti seized my bolts, and this is what I'm using here is a Napa brand anti seize. They're high temperature stuff. So works good. I, I use it on all sorts of everything. <laughs> so uh, I've already done a lot of that prep work already. And uh, I still got a few more things to put in. And we'll put those in. Um, one of the other things I didn't show in the other stuff, uh, you know, I, I've blued a lot of the fasteners. Uh, these pin, this here pin, I had to fix up. This I didn't show that, but 
I had to chase this thread. It was in really bad shape. It's a really weird size. It's 11 16 by 16 TPI. Um, so I had to uh, chase that thread and get this cleaned up because there's a little bit of this thread in, on the end here. So that was kind of a pain. Uh, but other than that, all these surfaces did get some blue just to help protect them. They look pretty good. So we'll uh, get going and putting this to get thing together. That's if I can uh, remember how it goes. So first off, this is the part. This is the part that I um, fixed up where the badge goes with those inserts, and that's going to go right on there and put the badge right back on again. At least that's the plan. Perfect. Perfect use of a knocker. This sort of thing. Uh, thanks to uh, VintageMachinery.org, uh, Keith Rucker's website, um, I was able to get all the documentation or instructions and how the uh, joiner all goes together and all that good stuff. So that this is a uh, helpful, in making me remember how this how this all goes. It's been a year uh, since I started this whole project, but. It's only been a few months on this. Alright, here's the base. Now, I like the look of the blue uh, on those machine surfaces, so I went through and blued all the machine surfaces where things slide and, and mount uh, just to help give them some protection. Now, I've got the locking screws in here, uh, or the set, set screws in here for the gib to be able to adjust the gib. Um, so we're ready to uh, put that together. I'm going to put this together. On here first. And then slip it on. And so there's a five, these little fiber, like my washers. And one goes on. 
then this uh, bushing goes on that slips through here which there's a set screw that will go in there and this way we can always flip that around later on kind of put that in and this goes on and then one of these beautiful handles goes on like so That looks very nice. Now, we'll get this on, we get, we'll be able to adjust this back and forth and put the bolts in from the bottom. With the nut in the right orientation, of course. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Just getting things figured out on how to grab this. Okay. There we go. A gib right here. And... Um, I'm going to just smear a little bit of grease on it. Um, I know everybody says no grease, but you know what? I've never found a problem with grease on the woodworking machines as long as it's used sparingly and uh, in the right locations. Yeah. I mean, I wish they are a gib. Uh, it's just. No, if they're just not like a tapered gib. About there. Okay, that's that'll be that'll be fine for now. All right, now we got to do the other side. We'll do the same. Same kind of thing. All right, we'll leave those kind of loose for, loose for now. It's just so it's easy to crank up and down and, and all that for now. All right, tables are on. Looking like a joiner. You can see just the portion of the dovetail uh, from the table. And this goes in here and engages that when you push that in there. 
And then when you clamp this with this through rod that goes through, and you push up a tight, it locks the table. I don't think this is a very nice, very nice setup. So we're just gonna slip that in. This goes into the other side, threads in. Probably need to double nut that, get that in there good and tight. And then there's a spring and this beautiful handle goes on there. And that's how you lock the table in position. There we go. And you just cinch that up and stuff. I'll screw this farther in. Actually, that's really, really a nice setup. And then you can just lock it. Yeah, both lock handles are on. Looks pretty nice. Now we'll put the fence on. All right, this is the, the end the fence mounts on. And there we go. So that T-nut goes in there. So the T-nut goes inside and then this here rides in between here, All right? And we're going to do just a very thin, very thin layer of grease on there. Just give it something to protect and slide with for now. Okay, this bolt thing, <laughs> this hollow stud has to be in the right position for that to hit because there's a, must be a little flat spot on the threads ground off, I think. So I need to adjust the position of that to fit. Right there. There. So that has to be in that position. I'll lock it back. There. Now, now, this nut pulls that all on there tight. And I still need to clean the threads up on that. So, all right, this is a. 7 16 14. Now, why they chose that, who knows? They have a cheap Chinese die here that size, so we'll just run that over, clean that up. Big acorn nut goes on there. And that tightens up. Oops. So use this to tighten both of them or one of them, right? Uh, should say. So this uh, works pretty nice. This you slide it in here, and you can tighten this part for the rotational part. <laughs> And you slide it out for sliding back and forth to position it. You tighten the back nut back here, pull this back, and uh, you snugs right up and tightens up here. So that works really well. I really like that design. Actually, now we need to put the fence on. So that's what those three bolts are for. And we'll just leave that a little bit loose so we can uh, position that. Here's our beautiful fence. And, uh, uh, let's see here. Let's 
this up so we can rotate it just like that now we want you don't want to catch a board on the edge here so this is proud just uh, about a sixteenth of an inch and uh, we'll leave we'll make sure it is proud or perfectly flush I don't even know no I, I don't think I can make it perfectly flush so it has to be proud of this piece here so that's just the way it is at least uh, it sticks farther out than this and uh, we'll have to uh, put a square on here and get it all tuned up too but for now we'll just uh, cinch this up we're good there we go so that's how that works right? you can just rotate that up very nice that's all that's all the way down not not using the stop at all and that's all the way over so we'll have to uh, get it all calibrated up here and all that good stuff there we go now we'll assemble the spindle and uh, cut her head you know uh, I, it's spindle cut her head same thing and uh, we'll get that put in yep, we have a little badge put on right here so we'll uh, get that one on this is the uh, depth of cut badge and there's a little pointer and we'll have to of course calibrate the old uh, pointer well nope. pretty slick and we still have the the Delta emblem here we still have this de Delta badge to put on Delta trademark registration US patent office quality tools Delta manufacturing company Milwaukee Wisconsin USA made in the United States of America All right the spindle yeah we got to put the bearings on they have brand new bearings they're uh, SKFs I think they're, it says something Argentina but it also says made in Italy so Now, I don't want to barf this up. I probably need to go to the press. And so I'm going to use sockets to uh, press these on. I'll use sockets to press these on. I just use sockets to reach over all that and press it in. If you're using sockets, I, I use impact ones usually. They're nice and stout. but whatever socket works uh, making sure they're not going to barf anything up and clear test them beforehand they work great now we just need to uh, put these bearing housings on They just tap on it. I mean, they're just a nice, snug fit. Nothing, nothing special. And I put in sealed bearings on here. Oh no, that one slips on. Just, just slips on. So. 
These holes are for the retaining bolts that hold the whole works in the joiner. Now for the blades to go in. Now these have these uh, backing bars that retain the blade and they are shaped. Uh, see here on the shape. This is a acts as a chip breaker. And we have to screw these in quite a bit. Well, probably pretty much all the way, just about. And uh, these press against there. And they slip in. Now the thin edge, there's it's a thick edge and thin edge. The thin edge goes against the blade. And has to fit down in there. And then we have to adjust the height of the cutting edge, you know. And this is where it will get a little, take a little while to do. I'll show you the basics of it, and and we'll go from there. Because first, we just got to get them in here. Screw the screws out and press out, and then it just presses the whole thing together. Fine line, but from too tight to tight, it, it's you just want them barely holding it so you can move it. I'll get the uh, clamping the bar in place uh, evenly. The blades are longer than the head, so but you don't want them sticking out and hitting the hitting your bearing blocks. So leave, make sure we leave plenty of clearance there. And I'm just looking for somewhat even. And I'm just going to snug them lightly. And then we'll have to loosen them, of course. Move them around. Now those both sides are lowered all the way. And these are just going to sit down in there. Being very careful because they're very sharp. It's a little too low and it's hitting right there. There we go. The one blade's hitting over here. These two bolts here have to come in up from the bottom to lock these in. to adjust our blades over and we had some clearance issues to deal with so we have to adjust them so we don't hit. Alright first off I have interference with blades so this blade is hitting over here the casting and and the other blade is hitting the casting in the same place so that casting sticks out. So I'm going to scooch the blade over a little bit this way. I still have space over here. So first thing I can do is do that so I know I can turn it. Then 
they're also sticking out a lot um, so I'm, uh, and I still have to I have to get enough clearance to spin it all right I can turn it all the way around now So the last thing we need to do for assembly, other than the pulley, the pulley had a crack in it and I flexed it a little bit and it broke. Uh, so that's all right. I, uh, we'll get a new one for that. Is the guard. Now this guard goes in the hole and it has a part of the guard and it rubs on this table. So it's supposed to do that and hold it up on your infeed table. Uh, but it, it doesn't move like super smooth or anything. So I made a thin Delrin washer and makes it move super nice. Just super smooth. So we'll do that. Uh, I put in a new cotter pin in this hole here. Needs a little more spreading. There we go. And then they have a special uh, formed cotter pin here that goes up in this hole here. We'll just tap that. And then we can hook on the spring. Hooks on there. Hooks on over here. Like so. When you open it, it wants to spring back all by itself, and that works absolutely perfect. It's held down by three bolts, two on this end and one in the middle here, and it has these other little feet on the corners and here and here and on the other side. I'm going to put in some uh, Teflon washers I made just like I did over there under the bolts and I'm gonna make small uh, some more washers or pads that will go on, the, on these other feet also well the saw is really starting to shape up here Looking pretty good, and uh, turn it around here. There we go. That's the front. So, looking good. Motor is next, and the chip chute. I finally found the chip chute, <laughs> and uh, we'll get that chip chute up up in here and uh, the motor and uh, some controls for it and we'll be pretty much done i think i hope so so that worked out just awesome uh thank you to gary brown old iron machine works for the joiner and it's a, like a new machine uh, guard works perfect fence works perfect it's just awesome uh so we'll, uh, we will con continue on. And uh, the only thing I didn't have is the guard for this. And I think I'm going to make my own. But it will it'll be fine even without them. But I'm really loving it. Thanks you guys for watching. Stick with the project. And we'll keep going. And if you need a knocker, please email me. I have knockers in stock. I have a few dovetail cutters in stock. And email me, rrintheshop at gmail.com. And we'll, I'll send you the information. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Uh, we're almost to 26,000 subscribers. Unbelievable. Uh, catch me on Instagram. I'm going to hit 2,000 subscribers, uh, followers over there. 
and uh, maybe even today on that. So we'll, uh, we'll be posting some pictures, and you'll see early pictures on Instagram of how far I am. I've been posting some pictures of that uh, before. You'll see it in the videos. So thank you guys, and thank you for watching. Made in the United States of America.